Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today we're going to be loading passengers onto our cruise ships and visiting some reindeer in Riverside. <laughs> This is a roll and write style game in which you build a board, put a little ship at one end of it, the ship's going to move to the end and back on the other side, and along the way you'll be using dice to represent passengers, you'll be loading them onto your ships, and then you'll be visiting different locations along this route in order to score victory points. You'll get victory points from a few different things, but basically at the end of the game, of course, if you have the most points, you are the winner. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game on the table here. I'll show you how it plays out, and I'll see you on the other side. In the game, we're going to be moving this cruise ship down this way, and then around on the other side. We are going to be loading up passengers, which is what the dice are for, into these different spaces here, and then completing tickets that we are then going to use to visit different locations around this setup, these different locations here, and scoring victory points you are going to be getting uh, points at the end of the game for tickets you have unlocked, the number printed right next to them, and then for uh, the visitations, sort of the, the little places you've gone to and how many points you score for that. So for example, here's a done um, sheet, one that I've used already, and each of these marks represents one of the passengers I've loaded. The tickets means that I've completed the whole line across, so I've unlocked that ticket, and then the numbers in these spaces are the number of points I've uh, acquired for visiting locations. The numbers always have to go up. So if uh, the first time I went and, and saw reindeer, I scored eight, then the next time must be higher than that. And in this case, I got 20 here. And if I had gone again, it has to be higher than 20 for me to score it at all, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside for now and I'll show you how the game works. So like I said, we all begin here. Everybody has one of these sheets and a pencil and you are ready to go. So if somebody's going to roll the dice, it can be the same person every time, doesn't matter. We're going to roll the green one first and put it here above this token. Then the rest of these will be rolled, and we are going to find the median. That means we're going to arrange these numerically. We'll find the middle die and anything higher than that. So these two will go above the, uh, uh, the top part of the tile there, and the other ones go on the bottom like that. Then everyone simultaneously is going to select a die and load that many passengers onto their sheet here. You can pick something from below and just take that many. And you can uh, then say I pick the yellow one. I can load four passengers onto any of these spots. Once I start on one of the lines, I'm allowed to change to something else. I do not have to complete one before I start on something else. If I take anything from the top, these two, either one of those two, then I'm going to mark off that many of these little flame spots equal to the pips in order to take those dice. And I can always, no matter which of those two choices I make, I'm allowed to also use this Aurora Borealis die and add that many pips, that many passengers to what I'm loading. But if I take this one, I'm also taking heat for those, okay? So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and pick this die right here, the brown one. And I'm also going to add this green one. So the brown comes from the bottom. This one comes from up here always. So I'm going to mark off four spaces. One, two, three, four. And I have eight pips. And I can put those anywhere I want to. So for example, I might do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll do this one here for eight. If I complete a whole line across, I get two things. I'm going to get the ticket but I'm also going to get bonus uh, marks, bonus passengers, wherever it says. So in this case, there's a single pink spot crossed off here. So I get to cross off a single pink passenger. And then for the next one down, there's two bonus yellow spots. So I'm going to give myself that as well, and I'll put them here. One, two. There we go, okay? Um, so that's how the dice work. Before you do this, by the way, and I should have explained this earlier, but before you pick which die you want, after you've selected these dice and put them out here like this, based on whatever came up, the median die, in this case four, also does one other thing, and that is move the ship forward that many spaces. So it's gonna go one, two, three, 
4 to right here. And then comes the step in which we load some passages. Once that's done, then we can visit a location, one of these places with the piers. And we can go there, if we have tickets, and uh, get some victory points from that. So the way that works is, your max distance from where the ship is currently docked, wherever it stopped, is 3. Meaning from this spot, I can go 1, 2, 3 to that one. I could go 1, 2 to this one, 1, 2, 3 to this one. Uh, I could even uh, go a little bit further than that if I choose to spend these three extra distance symbols I've got up here. And you have three for the entire game, so you have to be mindful of that. But I could then go from here, 1, 2, 3, and spend uh, two more, let's say, to go boom, boom to that one, okay? So I could do that. Now, what am I doing when I go to these places? You'll see they have a color that matches one of the ships here, and they have a number. I have currently two of these brown tickets. I just unlocked them, okay? So if the ship is right here, and I want to go to that spot with the reindeer, it would be one, two, three, four, five this way, one, two, three, four, five, same thing. So maybe I want to do that. So I'll go ahead and cross off two of these plus ones, and I'm going to travel all the way there. I'm going to multiply the number of the space, in this case 10, times the number of tickets I have of that color. And I'm going to get that many points. So right here for the first spot, I'm going to get 20 points for that. Next time I score anything in there, if, if I do at all, it has to be higher than 20. Okay? And once we've all done that, and by the way, if you pick a die, you do not remove it from here. Everybody could take the same die. Then we move on to the next round in which we roll this again, put it there, roll these, figure out our median. There are three sixes. There we go. So our middle die is actually any of these. It's six, which means they're all going to go down here because only the ones above the middle die go to the top. And then the ship moves six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go back to my sheet here. I select one of these. Maybe I'll go ahead and take um, take that brown one again. Let me see. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm going to go six. And I'm not going to... I'm going to choose not to take the uh, Aurora Borealis die. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now you'll see there's two little purple spots. Those are the royal seats. And if you manage to cross both off, then you unlock a special one-time ability once per boat. In this case, this one lets me one time, when I visit some location, I have one extra ticket for that. So I ended up right here. I'm going to go one, two, three to that spot there. And there is a, a white seven and a, the reindeer, the brown eight. If I had tickets in both colors, I could... Um, score points in both of those. But I don't have any white tickets. I could use the special ability and say I have one, but I'm not going to do that instead, because if I do that, I won't have enough points to score the reindeer again. It would be eight times two, which is not enough. But I could say, I'm going to use this right now and say, okay, I have an extra ticket, meaning I have three in brown. Three times eight is 24, and I'm going to score 24 points there. And I'm ignoring... The white one. Again, everyone's doing this simultaneously. And this continues. At the end of the game, which is when we come all the way back around to this anchor spot right here, as soon as the ship moves on to there, we are done, then we are going to score some points. Let's go back to my previous sheet here. You're going to add up the value of the tickets. So, for example, in this middle one with yellow, I got the middle two tickets here, which are value four and six. So I got ten points for that. And then I add up the excursion totals. 8 plus 12, that got me 20 points. And then the total over here, which is 30. And you do that for all of them. Then you'll deal with this one down here. There's one special, one final thing I haven't talked about. And, well, the special abilities, which I'll go over briefly. There's also these two churches. One over here at the very end and one here almost all the way back uh, to the starting spot or back at home. Whenever you go to one of those, the multipliers are only 1 and 2, but it counts every ticket you have. 
So I got 14 for the first one here. I got 18 for the second. I'll add that together. And then I also score the lowest of all these again. So 29 was my lowest. So I score that again. I add that together, 61 points. And then whoever has the highest total down here for this special ship gets plus 15. Whoever has the lowest loses 15. Then you're going to add up all of these values. This is your total for that. And then the value for the special ship. And then you get your final score down here. All right. Now the special abilities, extra ticket. This one lets you score another port one time. This one lets you, when you take a die, say it has three more passengers one time. This one lets you take the Aurora Borealis die once for free without taking the heat. And then this one down here, once you can uh, assume you can go six spaces. Um, <clears throat> six spaces. You can assume you can go six spaces without having to spend the extra spots up here, okay? And... Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, these are all single shot abilities in the game. There's also in the game two extra spots here, which are optional. There's like a little variant. You can shuffle these in, build the whole thing to be slightly longer. So, you know, you can do something like that. <clears throat> Obviously, again, this is random. So you can put these in here and they each give you a little something special. So this one over here has a port that's a double double type location, but it's closed off, so you cannot reach it from this side. It's harder to get to. And then this one over here has a three different kinds of places. So you could score a lot by going to just one place. All right? So there you go. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. That's Riverside. So first of all, one of the designers for this game has done a few other Roll and Ride games, and I like them all. We've got Trails of Takana, Avenue, some other ones, and I, I tend to enjoy those games. I think they're some of the best roll and write games out there. This one I think is also very good, and there's a couple of caveats I want to point out for folks in case maybe, maybe this one isn't the one for them, okay? So I've got two things that I'm going to talk about that I think bring it down a little bit, but generally, just about everything else, I really do enjoy in this one. I think it's a great game, okay? So let's talk about those two things. The first one is theme. Uh, thematically, I'm not sure I understand what's going on with the ship token and the board's a little confusing. I, the, the token is a ship, one ship. But I think we, it, it's supposed to represent an entire fleet of ships, which is why we are loading up different ships. And then there's this one little ship down here that only goes to a couple of places, and so I'm, I'm not sure. Thematically, it gets a little bit lost for me, okay? And then the other thing is the ease of play, and the ease of play is a big one, because I think it's important for folks to know that this is not one of the, one of the simplest roll and rights out there, okay? There are a lot of them that are simpler than this. Is that bad? Not at all. And I think once you've played a couple of times, you'll internalize this game, you're good to go. But it's a tricky game to wrap your head around, and it is one of those games that has really high scores, which I'm not necessarily a huge fan of. I like my games to score lower than 100. You know, a game which ends 58 points to 63 to 71 or whatever. Great. This is in the hundreds, so you'll end up with, you know, 260 points to uh, maybe 302 points. That could happen in this game. So be aware of that. There's a lot of math in it. Simple math. You know, you can do it, certainly, but it's there. So you should be aware of that. Now, everything else I do enjoy. The aesthetics, I think, are great. Great iconography. Very lovely dice. Uh, the cardboard bits are, you know, are uh, well done. I like setting up the entire thing so that the board is somewhat randomized each time. Very cool aesthetics and look. The replay value, I also think, is quite high. Again, the board will be different each time. The dice and what comes up will be different. You are going to be going through your resources at a different pace. You've got those little fire symbols. Try to conserve those. When do you feel comfortable using them? The pace at which the, the loop is made will be different. You, won't, you can't guarantee how many rounds you'll have. Sometimes 
you go quite quickly. Sometimes it'll slow down with a couple of low rolling rounds, and so the ship sort of pulls back, you know. And I like that. I think it it makes the game feel fresh each time you play it. It is not prescribed in any way. I enjoy that. Uh, the game arc is great. Rising tension as you get closer to the end. Dwindling resources, like I said. Your extra distance um, spaces. You have three of those. Little fire symbols. You have a few of those. What do you prioritize? And because of the way the game scores, that game arc and that rising tension really does continue to build. You have to consider how you intend to win the game. And speaking of that, tactics, luck, and strategy. There is luck in it because you're rolling dice. But that luck affects everyone equally. So it doesn't feel targeted, it doesn't feel punishing. The things you have to think about are, how do I use what I've been given here, what everyone's been given, in order to come in strong when this whole uh, loop is done? What do I do? And there's a few things you can do, which I like. You can try to score one color tremendously well. You can get 120 points in a single color. But that means you're probably ignoring something else which means your captain's score at the end is going to suffer a little bit, okay? Um, one of the things I've heard from other players is that it feels like there's enough going on in the game here where this sort of at the bottom here, it feels like yet one more thing. And now I have to explain the two church spaces and how the captain scores every ticket times two or times one and how you take your lowest score and double that, which is very... Uh, Gangshan Clever, another extremely popular roll and write game. This one, this part of this game, is sort of very on the nose when it comes to that. And I could see that. I didn't find that problematic, but I could see how that, that aspect of the game feels like, oh, and another thing. So be aware of that, okay? But strategically, and re sort of reacting to what's going on, I think there are many paths to victory. You can not get a great score in the captain area. And make up the difference by, you know, picking a couple of colors and just doing tremendously well on those colors. I like the, the locations, the little piers that are multicolored. So you can visit a single place and score in a couple, of, a couple of different ships. So very neat stuff. So there you go. Again, like I said, I don't, I don't think the game is perfect. But I really do enjoy it. And I, I as a package, it's... Uh, it's a robust roll and write. It's somewhere, you know, ultimately I think in, in the, the pantheon of roll and writes, the ones I've played anyway, it is somewhere in the middle. It's certainly not the most complex or, or headiest one I've played, but it is not casual, not as casual as many roll and writes. And I think roll and writes generally are sort of a casual genre. This one's a little above that. So I want you to be aware of that. So that if you are looking for very much a filler roll and write, this one is eh, a little a little above that. Something a little bit above that sort of real entry level kind of game, okay? But it's good. It's fun. I really do enjoy it. And if you are someone who's very comfortable with a genre, you want something else in it, and uh, you like what you saw here, then I certainly recommend you get it. These designers know what they're doing. This game is polished. I like those special abilities. This is well put together. So this is going to get a strong 8 out of 10 from me. That is a seal of approval. And as I said, I definitely recommend it. So that is Riverside. Very good stuff. Thanks everybody for checking this out with me. My name, my name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one.